my name is Emma, as obviously it's been said, and I was born in Nairobi, but grew up um, in a rural area, actually, um, called Cherangani. Anyone ever heard Cherangani? In your GHC, the hills? <laughs> yes, in a place called Kapsara. And I was raised uh, by, by two strong women. Um, my grandmother um, was one of them in my early years, very formative, and I think form, helped me form uh, very early on my ideas of what women could do. She was a farmer, you know, top-notch. Those days there were, you know, showcase farms and houses. All is a showcase farm because she had the best tea, the, the, the juiciest and fattest cows that produced the grade A milk. Um, and there I was uh, running around, and my mom, who's a school teacher, uh, and had left me to be raised by my grandmother, um, wasn't too happy anyway about the whole rural setting and whisked me off to Nyeri. Nyeri people in the house? <laughs> Um, and guys in Nyeri were very excited to see me. I was this Mudogo child <laughs> coming to teach all their children. Kedogo. <laughs> and I was a bit of an odd one out um, um, in that, because I couldn't speak any Kedogo myself. And all the children were speaking Kikuyu, so I quickly learned my Kikuyu. And I was quickly singing, and I'll do this because I did it at TEDx. I have to sing the Sunday school song. And all the parents were so disappointed because <laughs> I was speaking Kikuyu instead of teaching their children English with a posh British accent. Um, but some things that I would learn along the way, even in all these odd one out situations, um, that really sometimes you have to look for discomfort and discomfort and being uncomfortable and being in uncomfortable situations uh, makes you resilient. And, and therefore, my mom was a maths teacher, the only maths teacher probably in all the faculties that she ever was, and also shaped me and made me realize there were no inhibitions to who I was. Um, and so, naturally, I was an artist and a scientist and decided I was going to be an architect. And I landed in a wonderful school called Jomo Kenyatta. After spending all my years in all-girl institutions, I ended up in Juja Boys and One Girl, they call it. 10% female population, uh, with all the boys chasing you down the corridor in first year, first week, and I was wondering what have, has happened here. Um, but somehow still managed to excel in my classes and came into, out into the world, and all these situations I had been in where I was the odd one out actually shaped me for the world that I was gonna face because um, as it was, a couple of years ago, and it is changing now, many times I'd be the only woman on a construction site, the only woman in a boardroom dealing with male clients, male consultants, um, but my whole life had set me up for that situation. Um, and, and so I embraced it. So really being the odd on out built, uh, built my resilience in that regard. Um, but another thing my grandmother taught me and my mother is resilience. If at first you fail, you must try and try again. And also a little bit of what they taught me. In, in your own little way, you can do something. You don't have to be a great, you know, revolution leader. But in your own little way, like Wangari Madai said, you can do something. And you must be the change you want to see. So I joined the Architectural Association of Kenya, just in that regard, hoping to impact the built environment seeing what Nairobi was becoming and saying, no, I can, I can contribute to this voice in my own little way, in my own professional practice, I can do something. And somehow, didn't get in there hoping to be the first female president, but eight years later, I was the first female elected, the first female president of the Architectural Association of Kenya after 50 years. Thank you. And again, there I was in something that I was comfortable being uncomfortable, all male situations, going out, speaking to you know people who governors uh, or CSs, hoping to change something, talking about affordable housing, and somehow my voice in all that, despite being the only female in the room, was heard. And in that little way, I realized the novelty of being the odd one out was actually a blessing. So my challenge to you, all of you today is: in your, what's your little thing? 
I also somehow found myself in the education sector because I knew exactly what kind of education I wanted for my children. And the easiest thing to do was therefore start a school, sort of homeschooling at a grander scale, choosing the children and the kind, exactly kind of education I wanted to see for my children. Um, so we started a school called Kyoto, seven children, two of whom were my own. And now six years later, we're close to 500 students and we see ourselves as a lighthouse. Uh, we offer the local curriculum, but in a creative, um, creative way, out of the box thinking, applying still what I learned in my architecture school in education. So change isn't always a revolution. I saw education also as a way of impacting, and Nelson Mandela says it so well, education is the best weapon you can use to change the world. And that's how I ended up in the education space. In a little way, in a small way, slowly, hoping to raise future leaders of this nation. And somehow after I retired from AAK, I've been called on to take on something and I'm so excited to see uh, the hashtag today is Impact Nairobi. Um, and I was called on by Kepsa to take on and take on this initiative of hoping to impact Nairobi and change it in a small little way. What if we had a clean and green Nairobi? What if we gave each other way at the junctions? <laughs> what if the Matatu gave you way at a junction and said, no, no, you go first. No, you go. No, you go first. <laughs> what if you all separated our garbage at home and had re recycling stations at every little corner? What if we never littered? Each and every one of us never littered. There'd be no garbage in the streets. So this is what I'm hoping to change about Nairobians through this initiative. One Nairobian at a time, ourselves taking our destiny in our hands. And the few people I've talked to think I'm a bit crazy. But they say people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who actually do. So are you crazy enough?